Hello, and in this screencast for Apache ISIS, we're going to look at collections. Uh, to keep the domain object simple, we'll just focus on derived collections. So my domain object at the moment looks like this. It's just got some uh, properties and actions. Um, in the IDE, I've just cr added some regions just to uh, make the code a bit easier to see. What we're going to do now is add a, um, as I say, a derived collection. So uh, when I say derive, what that means is it's not managed or maintained by um, Data Nucleus, which is our ORM. And I'm going to just have a collection that's going to return all of the um, all of the objects, all of the simple objects that are turned on or the, the flag is switched on. So if I go to my injected simple objects repository that we have already, and we list them all, I'm using um, Java 8 so I can convert that into a stream and then I can filter so I want to just have those which are turned on and then I can collect those <coughs> into a collectors to list perfect so that would be a derived collection basically and um, we could ha make it a bit more interesting let's have another derived collection which is all those simple objects either this one or other objects that are turned off um, so let's try the application see what that looks like okay so the application is running let's go to the home page and let's look at one of the domain objects and so we can see that we now have two um, collections over here um, one's listing all of the objects that are turned off, which is all of them, and there are none that are turned on. So let's toggle this chap. So he's now disappeared off the off list and he's onto the on list as we would expect. Okay, um, why, are the domain, why are these collections being rendered over there? If you remember, we have the simple object layout and this defines any unreferenced collections should be listed in this tab group and the behavior of a tab group is that it will create one tab per collection so that's what that's what's going on there if we wanted to we could um, we could actually obviously main manually edit that uh, layout file um, or what we could do is we could go to the metadata tab and we could download the layout XML and just uh, pull that down as a as a file and if you have a look at this you can see that this is basically the actual sort of in-memory representation that the framework has, has figured out so it's um, expanded that tab group with these um, with these uh, settings for these two new uh, groups that we have these two new collections I should say um, but we could sort of take control and uh, update this we could move that in and uh, I guess I've got my uh, is that BS3? Is that going to be BS3? There we go. BS3 for Bootstrap 3. Bootstrap 3. Bootstrap 3. And uh, that's going to be C, I think. C for common. BS3. 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 Okay. So same thing as as what we have but now we can sort of manage this and move things around so I can render the object should look the same hopefully um, but then I could perhaps move it so let's maybe put the two collections one under the other and uh, get rid of this tab completely let's call that collection say re load the classes, reload the page and so it looks like this and uh, toggle and he goes between the two okay so that's um, anyway a quick example of uh, doing derived collections and a bit of stuff on the layout XML file if that makes sense give it a go